Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Spooler, and I'm the Director of Member Services for the Chamber of Digital Commerce. Um, we're very honored today to have a man uh, who is a friend, and he's, uh, he approached us oh, about a month or so ago. His name is uh, Mr. Anju Marampudi, and he's the Special Representative from the state of Andhra Pradesh, India. Uh, he has over two decades of extensive experience in financial services, management consulting, and information technology. His areas of expertise include fintech, blockchain, and machine intelligence. And he's the co-founder, excuse me, the founder and CEO of Ventvestor, an alternative data and analytics platform for institutional systems and investors. So today he's going to talk a little bit about Fintech Valley being developed in Fizag as a global hub for innovation in fintech and blockchain technologies. Please uh, welcome me and welcome in Andrew Marampudi. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Today I'm going to switch gears a little bit now in the session. We will be still on blockchain technology. I'm going to talk specifically about what one of the states uh, in India, Andhra Pradesh, is doing in uh, blockchain. There are two aspects I want to touch upon here. One is what the state is doing in terms of developing blockchain ecosystem. And the second one is what the state is doing in terms of implementing the blockchain. I'm sure both of them are very relevant for most of the audience here. Uh, before I get into that, I want to give a quick introduction uh, to Andhra Pradesh. I'm not sure many of you would know. This is one of the new states in uh, Andhra Pradesh, in India, Andhra Pradesh state. But the leader of uh, the state, uh, again, this is a government-led innovation. So like as we mentioned in the, one of the earlier sessions, uh, Mr. Chandra Babnadi is known as the tech, high-tech chief minister. And as you, many of you know, uh, last year, towards the end of last year, government of India has uh, withdrawn uh, large currency notes. About 86% of the cash in circulation has been withdrawn and paving the era for cashless economy. And when the government of India wants to set up a panel to oversee how this cashless economy will be implemented and what will be the impact of that in India, Mr. Chandrababu Naidu has been selected as uh, the chairman of the committee. So that's the kind of influence and that's kind of the vision he has in terms of uh, implementing new technologies for governance, better governance. He calls it, uh, he just went beyond e-governance, now he calls it uh, real-time governance. And just to give you a perspective, Andhra Pradesh state, even though it's one of the newer states, uh, it's now uh, the one of the, the fastest growing in terms of GDP, growing at over 11% per year. Just imagine that. And uh, it's also uh, based on some of the surveys done recently in India, it is ranked as the best and the easiest state to do business. I'm mentioning that because for a lot of uh, tech companies here, you know, it's not that easy to go and do business in other countries. So just to give you that perspective, this is the kind of state where, you know, it is ranked as the number one within India in terms of ease of doing business. And few other uh, stats in terms of, you know, it's about a state with about 50 million population. And this is the state uh, where you have 90% mobile penetration as discussed in many cases, many uh, previous sessions, how mobile is going to transform the way people do business, whether it is uh, uh, digital transactions, whether it is any other business activities or other activities uh, people do there. So that's the kind of the size of the you know, state government there. And that state government is going to, is working on developing one of its largest cities, Vizag. It's also known as Vishakhapatnam, with about two million population. As a global uh, fintech uh, valley focused on both fintech and blockchain. As I said again, in both the cases, the goal here is to develop this as a global innovation city as well as to adapt and implement whatever technologies come out of this. Those are the two goals. And just to give you, you know, what are the key um, pieces of this ecosystem, where uh, the, whether it's a fintech value where it will be implemented, you, we want to make sure you have a good academic institutions where people are trained well in these new technologies, and collaboration with corporations. In fact, uh, some of the courses are being created 
based on the requirements of the companies coming in there. If they say we want this type of education in fintech or blockchain, there's a blockchain academy being set up to train people in the blockchain technologies. And special um, provisions are being made to set up startups focusing on fintech and blockchain. And they're attracting accelerators and um, incubators to support the whole uh, ecosystem. And how the government is doing uh, in, in, to support all this is in terms of providing the facilities. So, you know, being, being in a new place, you know, they want to make sure uh, that the tech companies and the startups have the right facilities to run their businesses, both in terms of our technical infrastructure and the real estate. And the human capital, as I mentioned, you know, training the people in the right uh, uh, technology, mm, whatever the technologies are required for implementing or advancing these uh, technologies. Market access, so that's one of the key aspects is going to be, as I said, even the state alone with 50 million people, and this state being the first in adapting any of these technologies, imagine anything that can be implemented here, by the way, there are 29 states in India, and anybody who implements technology will have access to the rest of the markets. So this being the pioneering market, that's the kind of market access we're talking about. Uh, and in terms of funding, even the government itself is setting up a uh, fund, corpus fund, to facilitate this innovation and providing support to the startups and corporations uh, coming in there. And there will be several additional incentives. So we talked about the market access where what are the different types of things uh, they can provide. Uh, as I said, you know, uh, government is ready to implement these programs in various uh, uh, sectors and departments within the government. And you will have anything related with the consumers. You have 50 million people uh, uh, with mobile phone access. And recently, government has also laid out a broadband network. Again, remember this. This is the government has laid out the broadband network with 15 Mbps to 100 Mbps speed. And they are going to uh, enable every home in the, how, uh, in the state have access to the broadband. And they will be able to use even their uh, TV as an ATM, make transactions directly from their TV. So that's the kind of market access you'll have in terms of any innovations, whether it is blockchain-based or general uh, Bitcoin-based. And as we talked in many sessions today, uh, obviously regulatory is one of the key aspects uh, when it comes to fintech uh, uh, changes, or more specifically in blockchain. And government is ready to provide all the support it needs in terms of making uh, a, any regulatory support is required, whether it is uh, regulatory, whether it is legislative support. Uh, of course, it takes a due course, but the government is trying to be proactive in providing the right support required for this. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, in terms of um, uh, incentives provided to the startups, as well as the established companies. So it's because they wanted to develop a complete ecosystem, so you will have startups along with large corporations. And the government is ready to provide uh, right incentives and the right opportunities even for the large corporations that want to come and set up operations there. And if you see the full ecosystem where, as we talked about, right, uh, whether you, it, that includes large corporations, academia involved in supporting and providing the right uh, education support, and you will have uh, accelerators, incubators, and uh, VC uh, funding, uh, funding available, and you will have mentors. So the state is creating a grid of uh, mentors across the globe. Those, specifically those who came from the state, they are spread all over the world, they are create, trying to create a mentor grid where they can provide the support, whether it is a domain-specific support, whether it is uh, technology support, so they're trying to provide the facility through the uh, um, mental brain. And here, some of the initiatives they're looking in, in terms of the fintech. You will see a lot of activities they're planning to support. And obviously, here being the focus being the blockchain, one of the key areas within that is uh, the blockchain. And within blockchain, as I mentioned earlier, they are looking at uh, implementing the blockchain within the government 
And some of the use cases we listed here, and they're open for any people have any other ideas where the government can successfully implement the blockchain solution, even a proof of concept, government is ready to uh, listen to those. As I listed some of them, civil supplies, where government procures a lot of uh, food grains and other essentials, and then supplies to the citizens. It goes through a, com a different uh, distribution network. And how can that be efficiently improved using the blockchain approach for supply chain? That's one of the use cases uh, they are looking at. Other is certificateless governance. Uh, for a lot of things uh, in India, all the way from KYC and other areas, you need to take a certificate from one department, go to the other department, even though you are dealing with the department or you're dealing with others. So they're trying to see how you can enable this with a blockchain, where if all the information is with the government, why does somebody has to go to multiple departments and get a certificate and then go to the other department? So just listing a few of the uh, land records. Again, uh, it was discussed in uh, several sessions. So that's another big area where government is looking to leverage uh, blockchain technology. Vehicle registration. Again, these are a few examples. But uh, any other use cases? available, uh, government is willing to uh, support them and provide the necessary support. And the support startup ecosystem we talked about earlier, where that's the other part of the blockchain um, innovation developing. And lastly, the government is also planning to conduct a blockchain conference. That's where I think I was talking to Dan and Perian here. Maybe we can take the support from the chamber. This is being planned for this October to familiarize, popularize the blockchain concept and how blockchain can be uh, leveraged for uh, various government uh, functions as well as support the uh, ecosystem. And one additional thing uh, the government is looking as part of this is developing a use case repository. But when I saw earlier today, Dan's uh, uh, announcement that you know, they're launching a, a research institute building on use cases, we see a good op but opportunity probably maybe you know, we can uh, leverage some of that work or maybe join that, right? So with that, I think uh, I thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you.